the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is a significant uh, sentence in today's Gospel, which is taken from the Gospel of St. Philip, which incidentally has just been translated by a long-time good friend of mine into Polish, uh, by um, Paul Kinevich, um, where, which reads, um, God created man, and man the, the way the, uh, the complete text really says, and man created gods. So it is in the world. Men make gods and they worship their creations. It would be fitting for such gods to worship men. Now, uh, no doubt this uh, had some relevance in olden times to the uh, uh, polytheistic uh, 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 traditions that existed in the Mediterranean area of many gods. Uh, but more importantly, I think we can apply it in a universal fashion by saying that uh, we uh, create uh, false gods here on earth. And probably the most uh, uh, frequent phenomenon of that sort in at least over the last couple of hundred years has been politi political uh, social ideology. These are the false gods which have been worshipped and to whom incidentally or maybe not so incidentally millions of people were sacrificed. Okay. So uh, we, we create out of our ideas, we create various uh, deified uh, uh, concepts and then these concepts take precedence over everything else and uh, uh, result in very unfortunate things from time to time. So what does that mean? Uh, I think it means for us that we have to uh, have uh, priorities in our own interior pantheon. We have to uh, uh, recognize that uh, available to us and yet greatly hidden, there is uh, a deity, just like the, the, the hymn that St. Thomas Aquinas addressed to, to the Blessed Sacrament, uh, where, where he says, Adoro te devote latens deitas. I adore thee with devotion, O thou, uh, hidden God, because the God is hidden in the bread and in the wine in that instance. And so uh, it is important for us to remember to keep certain priorities. And these priorities in turn uh, have to do with uh, the divine, uh, not only in aeonial and heavenly regions, but also the seed of the divine uh, within us, the Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so it's incumbent upon us to call to mind that yes, in various ways, we are in touch with that hidden deity. And that that is really speaking of kingship and coronations that is the, uh, who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. That, uh, let's say, the, the, uh, the transcendental and cosmic realms also are uh, celestial monarchies. You know, the, the Lord Christ, 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in whatever way we categorize them, you know, they have not been elected in an election. They were there, and they are there, and they will be there. They are there because of, because of who they are. And this is, this is very uh, significant and very important. Uh, it's also interesting, perhaps, a little synchronicity, which we like, that tomorrow, the 8th of uh, May, is also the anniversary of Madame Blavatsky's uh, death. Uh, in just, what is it, just, uh, just a few years prior to the change of the century from the 19th to the 20th, the, the great lady gave up her body and went to the other realms. And, uh, you know, she had, uh, uh, for instructional purposes, she had, uh, she had sort of an occult psychology of her own, which consisted of seven uh, principles, seven parts of the uh, human the lowest and uh, uh, least durable of which, of course, is the physical body. But that the seventh, in turn, uh, let's say, in, in the heaven of the human consciousness itself, uh, she, she denominated for recognition it by the Sanskrit word Atman, which means spirit, and uh, this uh, spirit is the, the monarch, the king of the human organism. And then it goes according to mental and uh, astral and all sorts of other principles. So um, it is important for us to remember that accessible to us for uh, contact and for an audience is the uh, the divine king within us. And it is indeed the presence of that divine king uh, on his uh, multifarious uh, psychophysiological throne that uh, our help comes from. Uh, and this is, this is of great uh, importance. You know, we didn't put that Atman or whatever we want to call it, the, the divine spirit within us, the Christ in us, and say we have not at a human level decided that it's going to be there. You know? We didn't elect it. Oh dear, I'm going to have an Atman, how nice, you know. <laughs> well, you can say things like that, but they don't amount to anything. Uh, but rather, it, it, is, it is there. It sits on its throne, uh, and uh, it, moreover, like, uh, of course, in classical times, the, the kings of old, uh, uh, this uh, authority is available to the lesser principles. We can address it. In fact, to a very great extent, that is what we are doing when we are praying. We may envision the deity on the celestial throne, but that celestial throne has its duplicate inside of us. Uh, and uh, this is not such an easy uh, uh, matter to deal with, because uh, to have such, uh, such a divine spark, such a celestial authority so close to our consciousness has its, uh, has its own uh, uh, difficulties that we need to attend to. So whatever the case may be, uh, let us not uh, be idolaters in modern time, and idolaters with ideas, idolaters with ideologies, uh, things that were dreamt up probably in uh, some library building by uh, a bored uh, uh, scholarly person 
maybe in the British Museum, if you kind of uh, intimate what I mean. Not because it was an Englishman, but somebody who was there. You know, Marx, Engels, people like that. It's because once again, the, the, it's very easy to be in love with your own ideas. But you've got to keep in mind that the, the most likely reason for this love affair between yourself and your ideas is that they are your ideas. They are your ideas. And after all, uh, you are uh, a very, you are the most important person to you. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's, it's to some extent that's, to some extent that's understandable. In German, they have a saying, jeder, uh, jeder ist sich selbst, am nächsten. Everybody is nearest to himself, which is uh, a very Germanic saying, but uh, also quite true. And so uh, we need to keep in mind that we, we have an authentic contact with the Divine King, since we were talking about kings today. And that authentic contact needs to be cultivated. Uh, our, uh, our King Christ, the Christ in us, um, his door is always open. In fact, there is a, is a prayer like that. There are, there are no, no guards at the door. And so we should address ourselves to it. Uh, we, should, uh, we should realize that the uh, the, the anointed Christos, isn't it interesting that in the coronations there is the anointing with holy oil? Mm -hmm. uh, so the, uh, the, the anointed uh, uh, who dwells on his throne within us as the fragment, as the representative of the great and uh, eternal and ever-present deity uh, is uh, available to us. And uh, such good things as happen to us are very frequently uh, uh, the result of that presence. It's omnipresent because it is present in our consciousness. Great, uh, insightful uh, students of the human psyche have uh, called it, such as Carl Jung has called it, the self with a capital S, because that is the real self. Our real self is the divine. That is, we are an emanation, a, a, a forthcoming of that divinity that we are the pearl that has fallen into the mud, which is also from the Gospel of Philip, I believe. Uh, so, uh, uh, these are important issues to keep in mind and to uh, not substitute the uh, vaporings of the human mind for them. Uh, we, we have authentic truth within us. We have authentic reality within us. And if we refer to it and go to it, if we uh, enter that interior royal palace uh, and the chamber of the king, we will not only get a hearing, but we will get help, we will get uh, sanctification and blessing and uh, guidance for our future spiritual progress until the great and glorious, although perhaps still distant time, when uh, our indwelling light will join the greater light above, and when all shall be one and holy and true and good. Because that is what we are here for. We are not here for anything else. Uh, we, we, we dream up false gods. Oh yeah, you've got to heal the earth. But you know what? Uh, I haven't heard the earth complaining that it is sick. 
Uh, but, it is, but maybe you can hear the earth complaining about a lot of people who live on this earth are sick in various ways. That's, that's a different matter. And so uh, let us adre address ourselves to the invisible and yet uh, wonderful throne upon which the true self, the true deity, the Christ within is enthroned. And in this, in this king we can trust. This is the one who will help us because he has come even as the various uh, uh, hmm, myths have it, he has come to, to help us, to pull us out of the Gehenna wherein we are uh, on, e on Easter morning, pull us out and bring us unto himself, his light and his goodness and his uh, eternal benevolence, his eternal willingness to save, to uh, redeem and to guide. And of course, uh, uh, the more often we bring that to our minds, the more we will experience it. If we uh, displace it with usurping ideas and usurping ideologies, which uh, are not really compatible with it, then we are retarding its coming. The second coming is right here, but we have to facilitate it. We have to do something about it. So let's try to keep that in mind, and so may the mystery of that which hangs twixt heaven and earth descend upon us and remain with us always, and may the souls of the departed, including our uh, dear sister Susan, uh, rest in peace and go to their glorious destiny. Amen. <laughs>